The year is 1955. Chevy makes an overhead valve V8 to compete with all of the other brands. V8 and overhead valve configuration is what the general public wanted. Make no mistake, this wasn't Chevy's first overhead V8 or overhead valve engine for that matter. They were overhead valve from the very beginning with a four cylinder, then going to the stove bolt six in 1929. Their very first V8 even predates the stove bolt six produced from 1917 to 1919. In this episode, we will cover all of the first generation stock Chevy small block engines. We're not covering the aftermarket ones for the US market. Chevy got the small block right the first time and had a long production run. The first generation small block Chevy was produced from 1954 for the 1955 model year, clear up to 1992. Engine displacements we'll be covering in this episode, 262, 265, 267, 283, 302, 305, 307, 327, 350, and the 400. It's important to note, we are going to have lowest to highest horsepower figures, otherwise we will literally be here all day. The small block Chevy was designed by Ed Cole, who was hired by Chevy in 1952. It was his mission to build a lightweight, inexpensive V8 that would outperform anything that Ford had to offer. The most beautiful thing about the small block Chevy is just about everything is interchangeable. Pistons, heads, cranks. Ed Cole was a racer at heart, and he put his soul into this project, starting with a complete blank slate of paper. The block size is pretty compact, all things considered. 21 and 3 quarters inches long by 9 inches tall from the oil pan to the cylinder head, which could fit in just about everything, weighing 531 pounds, which was 41 pounds lighter than Chevy's inline six. The block only required 12 casting cores. Other companies needed 22, making the small block Chevy cheaper to produce. It also allowed the cylinders to be cast with greater precision. Featured forged steel crankshaft and connecting rods combined with the light valve train allowed the small block Chevy to have a very healthy rev range. Crossflow cylinder head, larger valves, hydraulic lifters, wedge-shaped combustion chamber. The combustion chamber has a large quench area to control detonation. The flat quench area also acts as a squish surface when the intake mixture is compressed. It's important to note that Chevy borrowed the valve train design from Pontiac, which was sort of against GM's rules. Brands were not allowed to share technology or innovation across brands for at least two years. But GM forced Pontiac to share the stud-mounted, independent ball rocker arm design patented by Pontiac engineer Clayton Leach. Introduced in 1954 for the 1955 model year, could be found in the Corvette or the Bel Air. 265 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 4.3 liters. It was also known as the Turbo Fire V8. It was good for anywhere between 162 all the way up to 240 horsepower and a special Corvette with a special cam at 4,400 RPM, 257 to 270 pound feet or 348 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of three inches. Compression was eight to one, could be higher, Five main bearings, the years that this engine was used, 1955 through 1957, could be found in the Bel Air and Corvette in 1955, everything else by 1956. It's important to note that in 55, the 265 has oil lines going to the filter, which most cars of the period did. It's only a partial flow oil filter. In 1956, they go to a full flow oil filter. In 1957, the 265 was bored out, making displacement 283 cubic inch displacement, overhead valve V8, 4.6 liters. It's good for anywhere between 188 horsepower all the way up to 314 horsepower, which was found in the Corvette with the ramjet fuel injection at 4,400 RPM. 
295 pound-feet of torque or 400 newton meters around 3,000 rpm with a bore of 3.9 inches and a stroke of 3 inches compression is anywhere between 9.5 to 1 to 10.5 to 1 five main bearings the years that this engine was used was between 1957 through 1966 this engine is recognized as the second engine to make one horsepower per cubic inch after the Chrysler 300. This engine could also be found in checker cabs as well as Studebakers from 1965 through 1966. Introduced in 1962, 327 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 5.4 liters. It's good for anywhere between 225 all the way up to a very impressive 375 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. It could make up to 360 pound-feet of torque or 475 newton meters at 4,000 RPM. With a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches, compression was 10.5 to 1, 5 main bearings, Years this engine was produced, 1962 all the way out until 1969. It was also found in the Checker Cab in 66, Avanti, ISO. From 1962 to 1967, 327s have small journals, 2.3 inches. They got enlarged to 2.45 inches in 1968. Also in 1968, they make the move from forged steel crankshaft to cast iron. So any engine, any small block Chevy engine made before 1968 has the forged internals, whereas afterwards it's cast iron. First found in the 67 Camaro and then the Nova in 1969, everything else after that. Very close in design to the 327 and it would actually be the reason for the 327's cancellation. I'm talking about the 350 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 5.7 liters. It's good for anywhere between 150 all the way up to 350 horsepower at 4,800 RPM. It could make up to 380 pound-feet or 515 newton meters at 3200 RPM with a bore of 4 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression could go all the way up to 1025 to 1, 5 main bearings. Years this engine was used, 1967 all the way up to 2003. This engine spans both first generation and second generation. It's important to note, this is about the time when Chevy starts with their weird naming with L everything. We will do a separate episode on that one day. GM designed this motor for the Z28 Camaro to meet Sports Car Club of America or SCCA Trans Am Series rules. 302 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 4.9 liters. It's good for 290 horsepower. Most enthusiasts will claim higher, maybe even 400 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. 290 pound feet or 393 newton meters at 42. 100 rpm with a bore of four inches and a stroke of three inches compression 11 to 1 it was used from 1967 to 1969 it featured a dual plane aluminum intake dome aluminum pistons forged steel crankshaft small journal used the same camshaft from the 375 horsepower 327 Introduced in 1968, 307 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 5 liters. It's good for anywhere between 115 to 200, maybe a smidge more at 4,600 RPM. 205 to 300 pound feet or 407 newton meters at 2400 rpm with a bore of 3.9 inches and a stroke of 3.3 inches compression eight and a half to one five main bearings the years this engine was used was 1968 to 1973 it could be found in the camaro nova blazer among other chevy products
It's important to note, around 1971 or 1972, horsepower changed from gross horsepower to net horsepower. Gross horsepower was best horsepower figure without accessories. Net horsepower is measured at the crank and it gives the best real world numbers. So you may see lower horsepower numbers, but that is a real world representation and not a fluffed up one. The biggest small block Chevy design came in 1970. It would be produced until 1981. The 400, which had Siamese cylinders. Siamese so, cylinders are cylinders that are arranged in such a way that they don't have a channel in between them to allow coolant to circulate through them to cool them. Generally arranged this way when space is an issue. It featured steam holes in the block and head gasket and the heads. 400 cubic inch overhead valve V8, 6.6 .6 liters. It made up to 265 gross or 150 to 180 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, up to 400 pound feet or 542 Newton meters at 2,400 RPM with a bore of 4.1 inches in a stroke of 3.75 inches. Years, this engine was used 1970 to 1981 found in full-sized Chevys. Most have two-barrel carburetors. In 1974, saw the release of the four-barrel as an option. The 400 was never intended to be a hot engine, but makes massive torque. Released in 1975 and would only be produced for two years, 1975 through 1976, could be found in the Chevy Monza, Nova, and early 1977 Pontiac Ventura. 262 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, 4.3 liters. It makes around 110 to 130 horsepower, maybe a smidge more at 3,600 RPM, 195 to 200 pound feet or 264 Newton meters at 2,000 RPM with a bore of 3.6 inches and a stroke of 3.1 inches. The 262 would be replaced by the 305 in 1977. The 305 was designed and built during the gas embargo and was intended to be the economy V8. The 305 was introduced in 1976. 305 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8, five liters. It makes around 150 horsepower at 4,000 RPM, 240 or 325 Newton meters at 2,000 RPM. Bore of 3.7 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression is around nine and a half to one years. This engine also goes to the second generation 1976 to 1998 it could be found in the camaro the capri the impala the monza nova checker marathon this engine used the same crank and throw as the chevy 350 Introduced in 1979 for the Monte Carlo and Camaro 267 cubic inch displacement overhead valve V8 4.4 liters. It's important to note that this engine was the smallest bore of all the small block Chevys. It also shared the bore with the 200 V6. It makes around 120 horsepower, 3,600 RPM, 215 pound feet, or 292 Newton meters at 2,000 RPM with a bore of 3.5 inches and a stroke of 3.5 inches. Compression, 8.3 to one. Years, 1979 to 1982. In 1980, the block saw weight reduction, which made cylinder walls thinner and lightweight head castings. Blocks from 1980 and newer cannot tolerate an overbore of 40 over. Heads are also prone to cracking. In 1986, the rear main seal was changed from a two-piece rubber to a one-piece rubber. In 1992, the small block would be upgraded. Generation 2 or LT1 featured reverse cooling system allowed coolant to start at the heads and flow down through the block, which kept the heads cooler, making greater power 
at higher compression and allowing more spark advanced at the same time. Some parts were interchangeable between the two, but that's honestly another engine for another day. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, a bit different today because this family is so vast and it spreads over decades. What was your favorite small block Chevy that you've ever had? Also include your best and worst small block Chevy experiences. I can't wait to read the stories in the comment section below. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. I call it the after party. It gives you the opportunity to share your ride stories. And sometimes I even share cars that I can't buy but are cheap. If you don't have Facebook and you would still like to reach me, send me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate everything that you guys bring in the comment section below. And until next time, toodaloo!